what we're going to do is we've already we've already gone through the process of uh, calculating already for the base bias or fixed bias. The rest of these are pretty much the same procedure, just a little bit different in the formulas. And so just make note of that whenever you go through this. So on this first part right here, we're gonna be looking at the emitter bias, all right? The emitter bias, this is gonna be, it's gonna have a disadvantage and the advantage to it. So the disadvantage of course is it requires two power supplies. This is the lab that you're gonna be doing on Wednesday morning. You're gonna be working with the emitter bias with two different power supplies. All right, so just keep that in mind. I think we've already, I think you're already familiar with hooking up a dual power supply with the ground uh, sources being all tied together, but you'll be doing that again on Wednesday morning. The advantage of this, of course, is that beta has no effect on the circuit. In other words, changes in temperature will not affect IC. IC is independent of IB. So the goal here is to figure out which ones of these biasing uh, uh, formats that we have, which ones are gonna be affected by temperature. In other words, when temperature changes, what, what can usually happen sometimes when we have an increase in temperature as far as our Q point is concerned? Would our Q point move up the DC load line? All right, so we have our Q point. It can be moving up or down, right, on the DC load line. And that's kind of important for us because we want to make sure that our DC, our Q point on the DC load line is of course in the, as close as to the middle as possible so that we can allow an AC, a full AC waveform to pass through. So if we have something we're trying to create an amplifier, say, then we wanna make sure that if we're speaking to a microphone that that full signal is being passed through and it is being amplified without any clipping. All right, so this is the emitter bias. The emitter bias is what we're gonna start on here first. We're gonna be doing a couple of examples for each one of our uh, different biasings today. Uh, the procedure will be the same as before. You will enter your information into the chat box as far as your calculations are concerned, and then we'll just make sure that everybody is up to par and that everybody understands what's going on with the biasing. Okay, so our first one here. Our first one is our emitter bias, of course. We're gonna be doing two examples here. We have, in this case, our beta DC, which is our gain of 125. So we can see here on our emitter bias, we say that we have two sources, right? Two sources. So we have a negative source here and a positive source here. So altogether, that's gonna be a range of 28 volts, of course, but this is the disadvantage of this, uh, th this type of biasing for is the emitter bias is going to be applying two sources to our circuit. So, what your, what your goal is right now is to go ahead and calculate. We're going to be calculating for all these, for IC sat, VCE off, mid, mid for IC and VCE. And then we're going to be calculating for IE, IC, VC, VE, and VCE. Because the two, what are the two, who can tell me what are the two values we need uh, that we're going to be using for our DC load line? IC sat and VCE off. Okay, IC sat and VCE off, right? And then for the Q points, we're gonna be using what? What two uh, values? Do you remember? Mid. IC mid and VCE mid. Okay, so those are for the Q points. And then that, very good. So now for the actual, what we're gonna be using is what? So we've determined our endpoints. We've determined our Q mid uh, based on the uh, IC mid and VCE mid. And then we want to actually put what on there for our actual Q point, we're going to be using what values? Would it be IC and VCE? Very good, IC and VCE, nice. Okay, so those are the three things we'll be looking for for our Q point. So. Let's go ahead and start our calculations. Like I say, the procedure is pretty much the same as the uh, base bias, except that some of the formulas may be a little bit different. Uh, so please take note of that. 
So start calculating for your uh, values here for ICSAT and so on. And then let's see what you come up with uh, in the chat box. All right, Brad, everything looks good except for double check your uh, VE and your VCE, your VE, VCE. All right. Uh, just remember that that VE, that's a negative uh, value. Okay. Artem, that is perfect. That is correct. All right, so just keep, keep calculating. We're going to go ahead and do all these values. So we'll double check and make sure everybody is on the right page here uh, that you guys have the right answers. All right, Artem, everything looks good, uh, except for double check your VC, your VE, and your VCE. Just look at those again. Okay, Sam, double check your, everything looks good except for double check your VC, uh, your VE and your VCE again. All right, Leroy, uh, double check your uh, answers again. I'm not sure what you did there, um, but double check IC SAT, VCE off, and IC mid. Artem, VC is correct. Very nice. Artem, that's it. Perfect. That's VE. Very good. Excellent. Now you should be able to get VCE. That's it. You got it. Good job, Artem. That's it. Nice work. Yes, Artem, that is correct. Very good. Test, nice work, keep it going, almost done. So go ahead and calculate the rest of them, awesome. All right, Tess, uh, your IC and IE, they're, uh, they're really close, um, but your V and your VC is pretty close, but your VE and your uh, VCE, kind of double check those. Um, they're, they're a little bit off. So you might want to just kind of look at the uh, other ones, the IE and the IE and um, the VC. Just double check those and see. I, I'm not sure what you did on the rounding. All right, test. Uh, test your your. VE is uh, correct, except uh, you're missing one thing. Um, I don't know if you saw it or not, but it should have ended up being a negative value for that VE. And then that would slightly change your uh, VCE. Excellent. Okay, so let's go over this. Uh, Let's see what we have here. So first, we have our IC SAT. So in this case, we have our absolute value, 
right? Absolute value of that negative VEE. So the absolute value, of course, of negative 14 is 14. So if we take those values and we add them up for, VCE, for VCC and the absolute value of negative VEE and divide that by RC and RE, then we will come up with a value of 8.64 milliamps. All right, 8.64 milliamps. That'll be our IC sat. Same process for the VCE off, uh, except this time we're just adding the two together. Remember the absolute value of negative VEE. And that of course is gonna give us a value of 28 volts. And then our mid basically is just half of each of those. So we just divide each of those by two. And for the IC mid, we come up with 4.3, uh, two milliamps, and then for the VCE mid, of course, half of the 28 is 14. All right, so for IE, okay, I think everybody's been getting this. For IE, we have the absolute value minus VBE. Who, what was VBE? Who can tell me what VBE was? We've done this numerous times. What is VBE? 0 0.7. 0 0.7. Very good. Or very good. So VBE is our base to emitter, right? That's where the diode is. So that is our 0.7 has not changed. So if we put those values into our formula, we have 14 minus the 0.7. And then all of that's divided by the 2.7K, which is our RE. And then our RB value was 15K. And then our beta DC that I gave you for the gain for the transistor was 125, and if we put that values into our formula, we come up with 4.72 milliamps. So in this case, for our circuit, for this emitter bias, our IC is going to be approximately equal to IE. So once we calculate for IE, we automatically have the value for IC. Then we can come down to our VC. So in this case, our VC is gonna equal the VCC, all right, minus IC times RC. And if we put that into our formula, we come up with 11.45 volts. Next, we have our VE, okay, we have our VE. So in this case, we have a negative 14 volts plus the value of IE times RE. If we put that into our calculator, we come up with a negative 1.26 volts. And then now that we have our VE, we can go ahead and put that into our formula for VCE. And in this case, we're going to have VC minus the VE. So when we have this now, you got to remember, we're going to have the 11.45 volts, but then we're going to have our negative 1.26 volts from VE. So those two negatives actually will become a positive. So we're gonna be adding that to our 11.45 volts, which gives us 12.71 volts for VCE. Then once we have those values, we can actually do our DC load line. So in this case, our DC load line, hey, is gonna look like this. And you guys are already familiar with the DC load line. So here we have our 28, this is our endpoint for VCE, which was the 28 volts. And then our IC sat, which was right here, which is 8.64 milliamps. So just break up your chart on the chart that you have for the IC side, okay? We only need really just go up as high as nine and you can make those in increments of one. And then for our VCE, we have a total of 28 volts, and you could break that up as I did here in increments of two, which is fine. Then you would take your IC, okay, which is also your IE, and you would place that somewhere around here, which is just a little bit below the Q midpoint, right, of the, the Q mid for here for 4.32 milliamps for IC mid. And in this case, we have a 4.72 milliamps for our IC, for our Q point. We have for VCE, as we look over here to the right, we have 12.71 volts, so which is somewhere in here. So in this case, our Q point for this circuit 
is going to be really close to our Q mid. All right, so it's going to be really close to our Q mid. Now, so in this case, we've established a, a, a Q point for our circuit. Now, the goal is we got to look at what happens whenever we increase the temperature, which in this case increases our beta DC or our gain for the transistor. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the next one, and you guys are going to calculate what happens when our beta, all right, our beta DC has increased to 300. We're going to compare that one, that Q point, with the Q point we previously did and see if there's any change in how it affects the circuit. So let's go ahead and do our calculations again based on the temperature increase of uh, increasing our beta DC to 300. And then post that in the chat. All right, Artem, that is perfect. IC is excellent. Your VC is perfect. Good job, Artem. Artem, excellent. VE is perfect. Nice work. All right, Artem, you got it. Good job, man. Way to go. Keep it up. Okay, so hang tight and we'll wait for everyone else. Brett, nice work. Good job. All looks great, man. Good job. Artem, that is correct. Artem, way to go, Artem. Awesome, man. Absolutely. I had a question about beta, if you had the time for it. Yeah, what's the question? Uh, in the book, it mentions that beta changes with uh, an increase in IC and an increase in temperature. Uh, but it also mentions an interesting fact that if temperature is constant, but IC increases past its max value, if it's increased further, beta will actually decline and go past or, or go below its original starting point. Any particular reason why this occurs? Yeah, that's because when it reaches saturation, all right, it starts to go down. It starts to act like a short and it starts to decrease. Does that make sense? I, I guess not. I'm trying to think about it. Yeah, so imagine, imagine um, you get to a point where you have a short, right? It's increased to, it's beyond saturation. Then another thing you got to keep in mind is that the further it goes beyond saturation, the more, uh, the more opportunity it has to break down for the, for the transistor to break down. And so when it starts to break down, you start to lose that gain. Uh, okay. So once like, if it was on the graph, once it goes past it, that, um, the set. Okay. So in that region. Right. So, and you see what the maximum is, you know, you can calculate the maximum sat for that, but if it goes beyond that, then all of a sudden it starts to break down. Oh yeah. And, and current would no longer be gained at that. Yeah. Correct. Cause in breakdown, it just, everything goes into free fall. Right. Okay. That makes sense. All right. Good question. Okay, uh, Micaiah, everything looks great. Uh, just double check the VCE. Um, remember, okay, 
on that value you got for VE. So in that formula for VCE, it's gonna be minus a minus. So you would actually be adding that to your VC to get your VCE, but everything else looks perfect. Okay, Sam, uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, just your rounding, but your VC, your VC is just a little bit high and, but your VE, okay, your VE is also a little bit high. So those two being a little bit high kind of affects the VCE. Uh, it may be just your rounding, I'm not sure. I mean, they're close, but they're actually the VCE, by the time you get the VCE, it's a, uh, it's like two and a half volts off already. So just double check the rounding uh, for your IC, okay? Uh, and just make sure that uh, that's okay. Cause your I, I mean the IC and, and IE is really, is really good. Um, but when you got to VC and VE and VCE, something happened in your rounding, just double check it. All right, uh, Isaac, so for your IC sets, uh, remember when you do your calculations there, uh, you got VCC plus the absolute value of the negative VE. So in reality, you're just adding those up, which comes out in this case to be 28 divided by the RC plus RE. So uh, I'm not sure if that's maybe what happened or not, but um, just double check that and then uh, go through your calculations again because that makes an puts an impact on everything else. All right. Uh, the VCE off, of course, is, is great, uh, Isaac. Um, but your IC mid and stuff like that is going to be changed. So your IE and your IC, of course, is uh, and everything else is a little bit off. So double check that. Uh, Tess, everything looks good, uh, except for VE and VCE. Uh, I not, I'm not sure what happened to VE and VCE. Um, double check those two again, um, cause everything else is great. So it maybe just, uh, went the calculator wrong or something. Makaya, that's it. You got VCE. That is great. Excellent. Good job. Uh, Test. No, it was uh, VE and VCE. Uh, I think your VC, yeah, your VC was perfect, uh, Tess. So just VE and VCE. All right, Leroy, uh, the first part all looks good. Uh, double check your, uh, from IE down, your IC, IE, of course, those will be the same. So when you calculate for IE, double check IE, and then, uh, of course, that's going to affect the rest of them. So check your IE again. Um, I think you, maybe it's just that uh, you didn't see the, um, the number right on the, um, on your calculator. So you're pretty close numerically, but it's not micro. Um, it's a little bit less. It's actually, it's more than that, but just double check where your decimal is. Okay. Tess, yes, uh, that is the value, but just remember um, it's not positive, okay? It's not a positive value. All right, everyone. So let's go ahead and go through this uh, for the sake of time. We still have a, a few more to, or a couple more to go through. So let's make sure we have this down. 
the first thing I, I think everybody has all this okay as far as your ic sat so nothing really changed um arlen brought up a good point that uh nothing changed as far as the values for ic sat ic mid and so forth uh because basically well we know that temperature is not going to have an effect on this so our values for ic sat vce off and the mids are going to be the same as previous values okay so those are all going to be the same as previously now we'll start to get to a little bit of change here uh for ie so when we calculate for ie we have to remember we're using the absolute value here right of that negative 14 which in this case is 14. so and that would be the 14 minus the bbe which again is our 0.7 volts and then all we do is fill in the numbers underneath for the re rb and our beta and then if we do that we're going to come up with about 4.84 milliamps okay this is going to be our ie and since in this type of circuit our ic is going to be approximately equal to ie so we have our IC as well. Then our VC, we're gonna have our VCC, which is our 14 volts minus the value or the voltage drop of IC times RC. If we put that into our calculator, I think most everyone had uh, around 11.39 volts or VC. Then we have our VE. Our VE, remember, is a negative 14 volts, all right? It's a negative 14 plus our IE times RE. And if we put that into our calculator, we're going to come up with a negative value of 932 millivolts. All right, 932 millivolts. So for our VCE, for our last calculation, we have to remember that our value here is going to be minus a minus. Okay, because our VE here is a negative value, but it doesn't change the fact that we have to subtract. But when those two come together, we're actually going to be adding that 11.39 to the 932 millivolts. And in this case, it's going to give us 12.32 volts. All right, so keep that in mind when you use when you put this into your calculator. Then we want to see what happened what what changes do we have based on our q point for our dc load line so in this case we have a new uh, we have our dc load line again so here we have our value of for vce we have our vce right here is 12.32 volts okay 12.32 volts now we know that our mid for VCE is 14. So we're fairly close to our VCE mid. So it's not too bad. But then we wanna go over and check our IC, which in this case is also equal to IE, which is 4.84 milliamps. So when we put that over to our Q point and find out our location for the Q point, we have about, it looks like it's almost at midpoint. So it looks very close to midpoint because our IC uh, mid here is 4.32 milliamps. So these two are fairly close, right? These two are fairly close to the midpoint. So the question is, is how much of an effect did our temperature have, okay, with our increase in beta? So how much effect on our Q point did we have with the increase in temperature, which affected our beta? They look really super close, but we want to know what kind of percentage or what kind of change did it affect us? How did it affect us? So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and calculate our change in IC and our percent of change in BCE. So punch these values into your calculator real quick, and let's see what we come up with for the percent of change for the IC and VCE, and then post that in the chat. Artem, that is perfect. Very good. That is perfect for IC.
Brett, nice work. That's exactly it for IC and VCE. Very good. Artem, that's it. You got it. There you go, man. Kaya, those are it. Uh, just remember on VCE now, that should have been a negative value, okay, a negative value, but those are the exact values that we need. Test, those are perfect. Very nice, good job. Leroy. Those values are correct. Ah, uh, there you go. Way to, way to go, Leroy. That's awesome, man. Both of them are perfect. All right. So you guys are catching on to this. All right. So basically what happens here, let's look at this real quick. So when we put these values into our formula, we have for IC, we have an increase of about 2.54%, which overall, when you think about it, we since our heat was so uh, intense, our beta or our gain actually increased more than twice or more than double what our previous beta gain was. And so the only change we had there with IC was a slight increase of 2.54%. And then for our VCE, we had a decrease of only a negative 3.07%. So this is a very stable uh, type of circuit for biasing. That's why we can say that the advantage of the emitter bias, okay, is that beta has no effect on the circuit. So when there's changes in temperature, guess what? We can pretty much keep that Q point pretty much close to the mid, all right, of our DC load line, which is really nice. But remember the disadvantage of this type of circuit is what? You need two power supplies. All right, Artem, very good. B, we have to have two power supplies, and that's never really a good thing because two power supplies, uh, cost-wise, you know, I know it's not a lot, but uh, it is something that we have to keep in mind um, in having two power supplies. All right, it's just it's just more expensive overall. Okay, so this is the emitter bias. This is the emitter bias. So the last one we're going to look at for today is the emitter feedback bias. All right, the emitter feedback bias. It's a little bit different configuration, okay? We do not have a negative VEE on this, in this case, but we do have our RCRE and we have our base resistance. So as you can see, our base is feeding right back into, of course, our VCC. So let's go through this. It's gonna be the same exact process as any other biasing, all right? As far as our calculations are concerned. The formulas are given to you here. And so all we wanna do is we're gonna see what happens when we have temperature changes, right? Temperature changes in our circuit with this type of biasing. So go ahead and start calculating for the IC sat, VCE off, and mids and so on, all the mids, and then everything on the right-hand side for IB, IC, VCE, VIE, VRC, VRE, and also VC. So let's go through that, post your results on the chat, and we'll see what happens after our second one with, uh, with the changes in temperature. Remember, if you have any questions or anything, just let me know. Artem, nice work, good job, keep it up. All right, Sam, everything, uh, everything looks pretty good. Um, I, I think it's just the rounding. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how you rounded your values there, but uh, they are all very close. Uh, they're, all, they're all good. So um, just make sure you double check your rounding and stuff, but those are, those are good. Uh, let's see. Brett, everything looks great. Good job, Brett. Uh, that all looks good.
Uh, Artem, uh, double check your calculations again. I'm not sure what happened there with um, with IB. Okay, uh, it's going to kind of affect everything else. Uh, double check your IB again, and then uh, everything else, and see if there's a change. There should be a change. Theo, nice work. Everything looks great. Good job, Theo. Um, Artem, uh, that's, uh, I'm not sure. Yes, that is uh, plus one. I guess that's what you're talking about on the formula for IB. That's BDC plus one, beta plus one. Makaya, nice work. Good job. Excellent. Yes, Artem, that is correct. Tess, yes, you're doing good. Excellent. Keep it up. Uh, Artem, uh, uh, no, that's uh, I'm not sure what you did there, Artem, or IC. So it's just the beta DC times the IB. Test, those are perfect. Nice work, good job. Uh, Artem, uh, no, uh, not sure what happened there. Let's see. Uh, you already, I think you already got, uh, IB correct, um, Artem. Let me double check here. Yeah. Your IB is already correct. I'm not sure why you changed IB again. All right, let's look at this. Let's go ahead and go through these and make sure you have the correct answers here. So on the first one here, I think everybody had this. The IC sat was 2.05 milliamps. Uh, all we, those are all basic. Uh, values. There's nothing really fancy there. Our VCE off is going to be equal to VCC, which was our given 16 volts. And then our midpoints are just going to be half, basically, of what our IC sat was and our VCE off. So I think everybody got that. So the other thing is, is that IB. So IB, we have here our VCC minus 0.7 volts, which is our VBE, basically. And we're going to divide that by the RB plus, okay, but plus the beta DC plus one times RE, okay, times RE. So if we put those values into our formula, we're going to come up with about 20.09 microamps. Uh, several of you guys had this perfectly correct. So our IB is going to be 20.09 microamps. Now we, we have IB, we can go ahead and calculate for IC. Beta DC is already given to us, which is our 50. So if we multiply that 50 times the 20.09 microamps, we're gonna come up with about one milliamp, okay? One milliamp. 
All right, so now we could take uh, the values of IC, all right, RC and RE. If we put those into our formula for VCE, we're gonna come out to around 8.2 volts. I think almost everybody got that. Um, that was not a big deal. Uh, finally, IE here for our current is going to be 1.01 milliamps or at least somewhere close to it. It always just depends on your rounding, but as long as your rounding is close, you're fine. So there's nothing big on that. As far as the values are concerned, they're really just all given to you. It's just a matter of putting them into the calculator correctly. Then we have our VRC, which is our voltage drop across the resistor. And if we put that into our formula, we're going to get a 6.2 volt drop across RC. And then for RE, for our voltage there, we're gonna come up with 1.62 volts. And then finally for our VC, right? VC is going to be our VCE minus or plus the VRE. And when we put those together, we come out with 9.82 volts. All right, so really the key to this is just making sure that you input the values correctly into your formulas. Now, after all that is said and done, we wanna find out what's happening with our DC load line. So again, we always wanna make sure that we calculate for our IC SAT. And we already know what our VCC off is because that's just gonna be equal to VCC. So we have our 16 volts here for VCE off. We have our IC SAT, which in this case is 2.05 milliamps. And then we look at our DC load line. If we put our VCE, which in this case was, uh, uh, where do you go, here it is. In this case is 8.2 volts. So that 8.2 volts is almost like right smack dab in the middle of our Q mid. So that's gonna be right here, very close to our middle point. And then of course our IC, which is right here, this is our one milliamp. And guess what? Half of that is our IC mid. So we are super close to the Q point. I mean, to the Q midpoint. So our Q point here is almost right on the money for our Q mid. So in this case, the circuit is working very well, all right, very well for us. That should give us a nice clean AC signal out as far as being amplified and so forth. So now we wanna know what's gonna happen in this type of circuit for emitter feedback bias whenever temperature increases. So let's increase our temperature. And in this case, we're gonna increase it to a beta of 90, almost double Okay, almost double from what it was before. Now, there's a little side note here, all right? This little side note here is for you to remember that with the addition of RE, the emitter feedback circuit will never reach saturation. All right, so in this case, if beta DC goes up, then IB goes down. They are inversely proportional. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you will probably see this maybe on the test or something, but these are notes that you need to jot down or just make sure you remember. So let's go ahead and let's do our calculations one more time and let's determine what happens to our DC load line based on the increase in temperature with our beta increasing to 90. Post them as you get it. And Leroy, yes, those were very good. Good job, Leroy. Yeah, I didn't get all of them, so I just sent yeah. them. Yeah, okay. I, I, I know you'll get them because uh, you got all those, so it <laughs> shouldn't be a okay. problem. Okay, all righty. <laughs> Artem, yes, uh, those are absolutely perfect. You are good to go, good job. Okay, Artem, everything looks good except for uh, VC and VCE. So double check your values for VCE and for VC. Uh, I think it was just entering to the calculator wrong or something. 
Uh, but everything else, the VRE and the IC, uh, those are great. Okay, Theo, uh, everything looks great. Uh, I just think you put the, the wrong numbers there for VC. Double check your VC formula again. Um, I think you just missed, you just saw the wrong numbers there, that's all. But everything else uh, looks good. Okay, Brett, uh, your IB, I need you to double check everything else above that looks good. Double check your IB, and then of course your uh, uh, IC uh, is gonna make a difference. And then uh, the rest of it. So double check from IB on down. Because it looks like VRE is okay. It looks like IE is okay for that one. Um, and then VRC. Yeah, VRC is off. So just double check uh, those few there. Yes, Artem, that is good for VCE. There you go. Okay, Micaiah, uh, everything looks good until VCE. Double check your VCE. Uh, double check your IE. And let's see, VRC looks great. Uh, VRE is just a little bit low. Uh, it's not too bad. And then your VC is off. So double check those values again. Artem, VC, that is perfect, that is correct, that's good. Theo, there you go, that's it, right there, VC, VC is good, perfect. Uh, Tess, I think everything looks good except for VC. Uh, double check the formula again and make sure you're adding the uh, the two value, the correct two values there. Just double check VC. There you go, Tess, that's it. Good job, nice work. All right, so for the sake of time, we're gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and reveal the answers just to make sure that you have the correct answers in your calculations. Uh, I think some of you guys just looked at the uh, uh, components wrong in the formula. So we have for our circuit here for IC SAT, we should have 2.05 milliamps. I think everyone got this side of it. Our VCE off, of course, is going to be equal to our VCC, which did not change. That's still 16 volts. And then also the midpoints are just half of those two. So everybody did pretty good on that. Now the IB side, the IB side, you, most of you guys got that. It should have been 18.53 microamps. 18.53 microamps. And then for our IC, once we get IB, we can calculate for IC. If we multiply that, okay, we multiply that times our IB with our beta DC, we come up with 1.67 milliamps. Now that we have IC, we can go ahead and calculate for VCE. So if we put those values into our formula, we're gonna come out with about 2.97 volts. All right, 2.97 volts. Then we can go ahead and calculate for our IE. 
which in this case is going to come out to be about 1.67 milliamps, which in this case, it's almost equal to, or pretty much is equal to IC. So in this case right here, we have IC with I equaling IE, uh, both of them at 1.67 milliamps. Now that we have the values for IC, we can go ahead and calculate for our voltage drop for RC. If we multiply those two together, we come up with 10.35 volts. And then for our VRE, okay, same thing. We multiply our IE current times the resistance for RE. We come up with 2.67 volts. And then for our VC, I think you guys are just uh, overlooking something here. Uh, for the VC, it's gonna be the VCE, all right? The VCE plus the VRE. So if we put those two together, we come up with 5.64 volts, all right? 5.64 volts. Now, now we need to look at our DC load line. So let's look and see the effects of our DC load line when temperature increases for this type of circuit, the emitter feedback bias. All right, what happened to our DC load line? Can anybody tell me? Looking at Q point, right? Looking at the Q point, we have our IC, right? Our IC in this case was the 1.67 milliamps. So that takes it way up here, okay, toward the top for our current. And then that's 1.67. So our IC mid was actually like around one. So that increased quite a bit. And then for our VCE, we come over here and we see that we have 2.97 volts. So our Q mid for that, right, for the VCE mid was eight volts. So that really made a huge difference because now we've dropped our uh, voltage for VCE from our midpoint, which is eight volts. And that gives us a new Q point of this area right here. Now, this is not a good Q point, okay? This is not a good circuit for us to use in amplification because with this type of circuit, with the increase in temperature, we're going to have clipping on our circuit when we introduce our AC waveform. So note, this type of circuit right here, okay, this type of circuit is beta dependent. In other words, when changes in beta happen, guess what? Our Q point is going to change. Our Q point is going to change. So let's quickly do our calculations for our percent of change and let's see what happens. What do we come up with with our percent of change for IC and for VCE? So calculate those and put them in the chat box. All right, Brett, perfect. Micaiah, perfect. Okay, excellent. Artem, excellent. You got it, good job. Okay. So I think you guys are getting this down. So basically our percent of change for IC was an increase in 67%, which is huge, okay, with the effects of temperature. For our VCE, we had a decrease here of 63.78%, which is also a huge problem with heat when it comes to temperature in our circuit. So for this type of circuit, the emitter feedback bias, it is going to be beta dependent. You will need to know that. You will need to remember that. So this is beta dependent. 